Next, we look at the voting contract. Um, again, I will first describe the behavior of the voting contract, and then we will analyze the code in detail. A voting contract, we will have a chairperson um, who is the administrator of this whole voting um, procedure. He will be able to give right of to vote um, to somebody, initialize new voters. Then for a single voter, he has two options. One is that directly vote to a proposal, easy. Second is pick a delegate. And that person is going to vote um, for him. So whoever that person votes means that um, the person who pick him as delegate or it also votes to that proposal. Um, there are some special tricky cases. Um, for example, say person A pick person B as um, his delegate. If at this time person B hasn't voted yet, that's easy case. We just increase the weight of person B um, to say now person B's votes will worth two votes rather than one. However, if right now person B has already voted, made his choice, say, voted to proposal A, then um, person A select person B as delegate will be equivalent to person A vote to proposal A directly. So if your delegate has already made his choice, then you will directly vote it to that proposal because he is going to vote for you um, in our specification. Now we can look at our code. First, we have a contract called ballot. Next, we define two structure, um, packed data to describe and uh, represent um, our instances. First structure is called voter. We have unsigned int weight, boolean voted, address delegate, and unsigned int vote. Weight means how many people he's delegate of, or alternatively, how many votes um, his vote will worth. Initially, we will initialize all voters weight to one, meaning that he his vote only worth one, or he is delegate of himself and no one else. Um, as he get picked by more people as delegate, um, his weight will get increased. Then voted just mean whether this voter has been has made his vote or not. Delegate means who is going to vote um, for him, who is his delegate. And vote is the ID of proposal that this person has voted for. Then we have a struct called proposal, stores the name and current vote count of a proposal. We have state variable chairperson and voters. Chairperson is the administration, very similar to the minter and author in the previous two um, contracts. Voters is very important because a general account, a, a, an account on the BNB chain, is not going to contain the information we need, um, the way the voted everything. So we need something to map the address to a voter instance in this account. Um, it is equivalent to be that we create a voter instance for each address and we need that information um, when an address is given to us. Suppose um, we have message or sender want to invoke a function, then we call voter message or sender. This will give you the voter um, of this account um, and the information we need. Finally, we have a list of proposal um, called proposals. Upon construction, we will take a parameter proposal names, which is all the proposal um, that will be considered. We explicitly say it is in memory, not in storage, so that will be cleared up and every time it's initialized, um, every time it's run. First, we set chairperson to message or sender to be the administrator. Then we initialize the first and also the only voter um, at the current stage, which is a chairperson, say wait to one. Um, right now, voter chairperson will not be created so we just set weight to one it will initialize a new one for us and uh, all, everything will be set to zero by default so that is the value we want voted need to be false initially um, if however we need it to be true in the first day um, because suppose the voted is like haven't voted then we will need to do that initialization as well after that we just initialize all the proposal according to proposal names and set vote counts to zero initially that completes the initialization, and we will go to future um, functions. The first thing we need to do is we need to be able to create voters, because right now the only voter is a chairperson, which is not very ideal. So we have a function called give right to vote. Um, 
and it has an address vote adder um, corresponding to the address of the voter. This can only be invoked by the chairperson. Um, so we first require message or sender is chairperson. Otherwise, we tell the people only chairman can keep rights. Sorry. Um, if that is the case, uh, we proceed and set um, voters voter address dot weight equals to one. So this again creates the voter instance if it's not been created and sets the weight to one. Note that there might be some problems with this implementation. Let's say for example, voter address has already been picked as delegate by nine people. So now the weight is ten, and you give right to it. Suddenly the weight becomes one. It is um, not very ideal. So if you want to make it safer, we need to run check here and require, say, voters voter address or weight is zero or other checks. Um, but we can just assume that the chairperson will um, not mess things up and just proceed. The next function is an interesting part of this contract called delegate. We have an address to. No, we have no address from because the address from is going to be message or sender. Um, first, we find the voter instance of message or sender. So we have voter memory sender is going to be um, voters message or sender. We will require sender hasn't voted. Um, otherwise, we say you already voted and you can't pick a delegate. Sorry. Then we follow the chain. So while voters two dot delegate is not address zero we will follow then two is voters two dot delegate so that means suppose person a pick person b as delegate however person b has already picked person c as delegate then what we should do is to propagate this delegate relationship and say okay now person a's delegate is person c another thing we need to check is we want to make sure that there isn't cycles because if person A picks person B as delegate, person B per pick person C as delegate, and then person C picks person A as delegate, that mess up everything because we don't know who is actually really going to vote. So we also need to make sure that two is not going to be message or center. The way we do that is we make sure that um, we will only continue going the delegate cycle um, if two is not message or center. Otherwise, if we already see two is message or sender, we're gonna break. Uh, we're gonna break and then um, spot the problems here in order to make sure it always terminates. So then we require two is not message or sender. Um, so that means if the while is ended because of two equals message or sender, we have a cycle and we say, okay, you cannot delegate yourself. Um, you cannot form a cycle. Uh, you cannot mess up. So the key point here is to report a problem um, if this thing happens. Otherwise, if we proceed, that means we didn't form a cycle and the while ends because voters two dot delegate is address zero. That means this person voters two do not have a delegate and he will be the person who really votes. Then we say sender dot voted is true because he already picked a delegate. Um, he cannot pick two delegate. He cannot. Both pick a delegate vote, so we say, okay, you're done. You do, you can't do anything else. We also say senders dot delegate is going to be two um, sets the delegate um, it, because that will builds up the delegate chain. If somebody else um, points to sender, then it need to follow the chain. Then if voters two dot voted, that means this his delegate has already vote. Then we need to vote directly, and we say proposals voters two dot vote. Um, dot voter count is going to plus by senders dot weight. So voters to dot vote is the ID of proposal of this person's vote, and then proposals voters to dot vote is the proposal that the delegate has voted to, and we need to add it up. Otherwise, we simply say voters to dot weight is going to be increased by senders dot weight. So voters to now will worth more votes if he made a vote. If we want to um, accelerate this whole thing, um, we can use union find set and uh, path compression. But uh, um, this video is not about algorithms and data structures, but smart contracts. So we just use the simplest uh, um, implementation, follow the chain, and we do not do path compression. Finally, it's um, the vote and uh, winning proposal. Um, so vote is. Uh, easy and uh, straightforward we say voter memory center is going to be um, 
voters message or sender and we require it hasn't voted yet otherwise we say oh you already voted then we say voted is true um vote is proposal uh, so all the information is recorded accordingly and we add up the vote count um, by senders.wait so proposal here is the id again finally um, we can query winning proposal at any time um, we just maintain winning proposal vote count and uh, winning proposal then we iterate all possible proposals if the vote count is larger than current best vote count then we say okay um, this vote uh, this proposal is winning over the previous best and we just pick the one with the largest vote count by now so we'll be able to give you the real time um, winning proposal every time you invoke a query to winning proposal function that's all for the voting contract we can quickly have an overview um, we have our packed data structures to store all the related information we have our state variables to map from address to the real instances of the voter. Upon construction, just do a bunch of initialization. We are able to give right to vote. We can do some delegate. Inside delegate, we need to do a lot of um, corner case checks and do a lot of require in order to make sure that we don't mess up anything. Finally, we do some votes um, and uh, report winning proposals accordingly. That will be concluding the voting contract. We can see that there might be some tricky case and easy to get it wrong. Mm. So a good thing is that um, there are test nets on blockchain that you can just apply for money, apply for a token, a BNB assets, instead of really need to pay. Um, this is where you will be able to test your contracts. Um, and two lectures later, we will also introduce um, how to write tests um test the codes that will be able to make sure that your um contracts are acting in expected ways at least in the tested aspects using truffle and um other tools so that will conclude um course five today we see three contracts as an example coin token um crowdfunding and uh, voting um, i hope that this give you a more general understanding to solidity language because before I understand that just looking at the language might be hard to understand. So um, we specifically designed this video um, to show up more examples. Uh, we will see two more examples, um, auction and blinded auction um, in the next video. Um, see you later.